Right, so following on from my previous video, this is going to be a vacuum saved episode, which is inspired by, you know, Teletech Studios on YouTube, yeah? Check out his channel, be sure to subscribe. So this is my first episode of Vacuum Saved. Now, these are the ones that you haven't seen, that I've just accumulated over the years. Not years, just the past several months, or during lockdown even. So yeah. First up is this DCO7 here, it's the All Floors model, it's a late, oh Henry's a clumsy guy man. Anyway, it's a DCO7 All Floors, a late model because it's got the 5 year guarantee sticker, and it's not light grey, it's a more shiny kind of grey, but anyways, that's that, and it's got the reinforced handle as well, which shows that it's the later version. It's got a slight crack in the corner of the handle, but that's just cosmetic. Right, so, will it run? Let's find out. Apart from the state it's in, it's needing a refurb. It works fine. A bit of water's coming out, but that's because of my shed roof leaking. But, you know, it will clean up nicely. It will be a fine vacuum for someone. The hose itself is not... Oh, yeah, it's ripped. That's great, isn't it? But then again, those are pretty cheap on eBay. Or you can just cut it down and then... Reconnect it again. So a new hose, a bit of a clean, and you got a good DCO7. I forgot to check the filter, which is not too bad. Looks like it's been washed, but yeah, the whole vacuum looks like it's been amateurly washed, especially the cycling area. But there's a bit of moisture in there. But apart from that, it's not too bad. It's not too badly scuffed either, so yeah, that's that. Next up is this um, 2004 Henry from week 21 of 2004. Yeah, so the cable rewind's been just fine. The cable guide has popped out somehow, I don't know how that happens, but it does. So, this one works absolutely fine. It's got the ultra-powerful UDS 1100 watt motor in it. But the problem with this is the switch, so it works, but you got to hold it down. Amazingly, the motor actually works, because these have a reputation of burning the motors up. So, a new switch. Yeah, so a new switch will have it up and running again. Needs a toolkit, but apart from that, the machine itself is in pretty good nick. And obviously, they need a clean as well, like all of these do. So let's check the filter. Yeah, that'll need a bit of a clean, but the bucket's not too bad. It's a bit dusty there, but it's typical on a abuse Henry. So that's the 2004 Henry. This is the one that you've seen previously, but I'll show it to you again. So it works, but it just needs a good clean, and the high and low switch is a bit iffy. And then obviously someone must have vacuumed up something wet because of that. It's got bubbles in it. So that's the 2004 Henry and that's the 2006 Henry. Both of these are the same except that one's got a different motor and it's single speed. This one's twin speed with a different motor. Although it's kind of weird that this one's um, 1200 watts. So it draws more power than the UDS one but the UDS one has more suction. 
So it just goes to show that with better engineering, you can get a better vacuum. This one's a DC-75 kinetic big ball animal. So this one, I only got it because I haven't got myself a decent version because my previous one, I couldn't be bothered cleaning it out because it was beyond my motivation to do so. So I got this one instead. The other one I got rid of, but this one's just fine. Yeah, all it needs is just a bit of a clean up really. It's been used by someone who's just looking to get something lighter. So it's been pretty well looked after. It was only used lightly for a few years by the looks of it. I know it's dusty in that, but that's because of its um it's just been in the shed really. I mean if you look at the internal holes, for example, in the ball area, let me just wipe this cable up. Yeah, just look at that hose. It's not even that bad. It's pretty clear. Quite clean even. So yeah, it's been pretty lightly used. There's not that many scuffs either. Well, yeah, on the wheels. That's just the wheels. But the vacuum itself is pretty mint, so I'm happy with that. The Kirby Heritage 2 Turbo is the other one that I've got along with the Henry from 2006. But I'll show it to you again anyways. So, skip forward to that one next if you can't be bothered watching this part. And also, since this is my first vacuum saved episode, I'm sorry if it's not up to Intellitech Studios standards. So. so yeah, bear with whilst I improve my techniques and that. But anyway, the Kirby Heritage 2 here, it's got a bit of discoloration on the toe touch control because that's supposed to be red and black. But the vacuum itself, far needing a, a really good polish and a clean up, it's pretty mint, I reckon, underneath the... Uh, What's it called? The corrosion or the oxidization, whatever it is. And it's the earlier version because it's got the um, it's got that pattern on the handle. Because mine's a later version that doesn't have that. Although I do prefer the later version, so it is what it is. The bag itself is pretty mint, I think, just from looking at it briefly. Oh, it even says Scott Fetzer on the bag. Right there. It's kind of so. Just needs a new belt and a brand new bag and then it's all in good working order. The bag is the original Heritage 2 style before the um, Micron Magic came out. So this is the ultra rubbish type that leaks dust. And the bag even came off. So that's led to a dusty fill tube in there. It's quite dusty, look at that. So that'll need a good wash. Apart from that, I'm pretty happy with it. By the way, the Henry was a tenner flat and the Kirby was 12. I can't remember how much the 75 was, but it wasn't that much. The Morphe, which is ultra light, 1400 watt, however, it's pretty grubby. It just needs a really good wipe down because it's been in the shed, you see. Um, it's got no tools on it apart from the extension wand, which I'm alright with because I don't really need the attachments anyways. It's a proper 2000s vacuum this is. So you've got one, two, three, four carpet settings or floor settings because that's hard floors. Short pile, medium pile and deep pile. Five stage filtration, 1400 watts, ultra light. And I ain't got no dust bags in here because I removed them all. And I had to break off the um, safety catch for the bag door because I don't want to keep the dusty old bag in there. But yeah, that's that. So let's switch it on. Oh, 
Oh wow. So it's got good suction, but the belt's broken on it because it was smoking and it did a really good job of vacuuming up all the smoke as well. So yeah, win there. Stinks of burnt rubber now, but that's that. Let's take a look at the brush bar. Okay, so it definitely needs a new belt because it's broken, but it's got some beta bars on the brush, which is quite amazing for its time because you don't really expect it on a budget vacuum. But apparently these are rubbish anyway, despite the um, beta bar because they don't actually groom. I had a dark green version of this a few years ago and it just didn't work that well, so I got rid of it. But the silver one looked a lot better, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to give it another try again. So yeah, here it is, awaiting a refurb. They don't make hoovers like this anymore because they're old-fashioned. Even though it's around 20 years old, less than that, they just don't make them anymore. So next up is this Royal Vacuum from America. Made in America, just like the Kirby's are. It's basically a lightweight version of a Kirby, but it's their competitor. Now, if we try and find the serial number, here it is. Oh, actually, as a coincidence, it's also made in Cleveland, Ohio, just like the Kirby's are. It's a model 606, and I got this one. Um, I think it was £15 off Marketplace. But yeah, it's got the... Unfortunately, it's not got the beta bars, but it's still a pretty powerful vacuum, because I tried it briefly after fitting a new belt on it, and it actually works really, really well, just as well as a Kirby, but in a lighter format. So let's plug it in. It's got a pretty long cable on it as well, which feels heavy duty, because it's quite thick and robust, whereas the Kirby ones feel quite flimsy, because they're actually natural rubber, and they just break a lot easier. Unfortunately, it's got the pattern aftermarket bag on it, which just says vacuum cleaner. So as a result, it's just a shakeout bag. You can't even fit a bag to this because it's literally just the bag itself with no fill tube at all. It's just connected to the um, motor outlet and that's it. It's meant to have a headlight as well under here. But it hasn't got one. And this part comes off like a dirt devil handy zip. Not handy zip. A royal hand vac, which is basically a dirt devil handy zip. So yeah, that's that, and it's also got the um, suction control gauge, so it sucks in some airflow, and then that bleed valve goes in when there's um, a restricted airflow. So that's a pretty well thought out design as well, which Kirby's don't have. Anyways, let's switch it on. I like how the bag inflates quite nicely. Just like in the cartoons, look, watch that. And it sounds quite nice. It sounds like a uh, classic old school vacuum. It's also got the height control, which is quite an inconvenient design because you've got to bend over and then turn this dial several times before it adjusts the height compared to Kirby's toe touch control, which is actually quite decent for a manual height adjustment. So yeah, that's that. So the more you turn it anti-clockwise, I mean clockwise even, the lower it goes to the floor and if you turn it anti-clockwise, it raises the height. And one more thing that I learned about this is that there's like a red thing there going into the motor. Apparently that's a thing that you pull out to oil the motor bearings, so that's pretty well thought out as well. I actually wanted to refurb this and just run it as a daily driver for a few days but I never got around to it so for now it's sitting in the shed and lastly we've got the Kirby G4 I actually got this one a few days ago locally actually which was just up the road now the story behind this G4 is that it was £30 it's basically the owner said that he bought it for just over a grand and he used it about three times which I don't believe because it's pretty grubby but you know, he said that the tools themselves don't look to be used that much. I mean, the hose seems pretty mint on its own. 
and not even that, the vacuum itself seems pretty mint because if you look at the wheels for example, normally they're badly scuffed up but this looks mint, so maybe he has used it only a few times look at that there's literally no marks at all on the vacuum, scratches wise yeah there might be some marks now on the rubber treading but that's because of me you know rolling it around in the garden but it's even got the bag label whichever that is and that is actually purple which usually fades so I'm not too sure if it's meant to be purple actually because I've not seen that before on a G4 and also the bumper look at the bumper yeah as you can see it's very very slightly scuffed up in the corners but usually on a used Kirby see this coloured part here that's always abused proper badly so much so that the corner is actually worn off but this looks quite mint compared to some of the ones I've seen well not fully mint but in really good condition and it's also purple which is something that I've not seen until now it just needs a good clean really so it's got the tech drive pedal still intact because usually those fall out and one more thing that attracted me to this is that it's got the earlier 700 watt motor so if I hold on let me just turn this the other way around right so it's got the 700 watt motor which is the most powerful motor that they used in the UK it's 3 amps or is it 5 amps because it says 5 amps as well on the sticker but yeah that's that he gave me everything he gave me the attachments he gave me the hose he gave me um, even the VHS tape which I put away for now but it also came with some spare belts this looks unused it's a spray gun and whatever that is, I don't know what that is, I've not seen it before, but apparently it's meant to be with a Kirby, which I doubt, but it's there anyway. You've got the handheld, handheld, um, handle, massage cup, both the ones, stair tool, crevice tool with a brush on it, and the motor in valve, along with a dusting brush, along with the suds filter. It didn't come with a shampoo kit, but I've already got a brand new one of those from a Avalier that I bought which you've probably seen featured on the channel before but anyways let's get this running yeah so I don't like these cables because they feel proper flimsy yeah they're really flexible and nice but they don't grip I mean they grip quite strongly against your hand so it makes it a lot harder to wind the cable up and they break easier because it's a natural kind of rubber but let's plug it in anyway If you look underneath it, it's quite dusty. The brush bar is quite... Nah. It's definitely been used more than three times. But then again, he said that it's been sitting unused for a good 25 years or whatever. How it, however long it's been. Because it's a 1994 Kirby. So, that's quite a long time for a vacuum to be sitting unused. Which explains the oxidised... Uh, not plastic, the metal. But anyways, yeah. It's quite mint. I'm happy with it. I only bought it for the motor because I was going to scrap this Kirby but I'm having second thoughts now and one more thing it's the 80th anniversary edition so it's got the labelling on the handle and it's got the 1940 logo on it as well I think all G4s have that but it has it anyways and as for the bag let's see yeah look this is another piece of evidence that shows that it's hardly been used because it's actually got a KBG3 bag in it so if you look at that it tells me that maybe he was telling the truth because in his house he had a Vax uh, from the 2000s, I don't know what model it is but yeah, he wanted something lighter and he got one the bag doesn't look too dusty the fill tube looks quite clean actually oh no it's a bit dusty now that I've taken it out only slightly dusty though but yeah these bags are rubbish 
so that's the G4. Oh, and by the way, it came with the uh, zip brush as well, and that was actually brand new, so that's quite nice to use. So yeah, that's all the vacuums that I've saved recently since uh, lockdown maybe. But yeah, let me know if you want to see more of these videos because this is the first time I've done one of these. So yeah, your feedback would be appreciated. Thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, with the G4, another thing that surprised me is, you know, how this, what's it called, the belt lifter, it's still got the plastic on it, so... Yeah, that's going to be quite mint underneath. And not only that, when I took the cleaner head off the first time I've seen it, the impeller, or the fan, whatever you want to call it, is actually mint, just like the Heritage 2 one. So, look at that. It's not even chewed up at all in the slightest. It's very, 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 very slightly dusty. But it's not the Kevlar one, is it? It's the original G4 style from 1994. But, yeah, it just goes to show that it maybe has been hardly used after all. Right, yeah, so apart from the zip brush, which is upstairs, and I've kept that safe. It's got the floor tool, which is a nice metal base before they cheapen them out. So I've got that. I've got a brand new shampoo system, which didn't come with the G4, but it came with the Avalia, so I got lucky there. Completely brand new by the looks of it. It's entirely mint. So yeah, I'm lucky to have that. And also a purple box. I think the G4, I'm not sure if the G4 is meant to be purple or blue, but here it's purple from what I can see anyway, based on the bumper and the uh, Micro Magic label, along with the box that I've got here. So it's a, well, I took two shampoo, bottle, shampoo bottles out, but it's got some spare belts, one bottle of shampoo left, and a Kirby Odorific the odorizer and you just put several drops onto the affected area apparently so I'm not too sure I think you just apply it into the um, shampoo box with the suds that you use and that's it just do that so anyways that's all I've got for it